Welcome to Medica Nova Wellness Studio. I'm Dr. Angelica Maria Koch with the educational videos about optimal health and the most innovative and holistic approach to your well-being. So as summer is upon us, uh, at least in the Northern Hemisphere, we are also exposed to insect bites. And nobody likes mosquito bites and the simple and constant itch is annoying enough, but there have been concerns, and for good reasons, about more serious conditions that can occur, for example, with mosquito bites. So in this video, let's take a look how you can heal your insect bites with natural and effective therapeutic tools. So enjoy. To stay updated with my ongoing videos, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel, share and like it with your friends and families, and don't forget to click that bell as it notifies you every time I upload a new video. And thank you so much for your thumbs ups and likes. Let's gain a little understanding about mosquitoes before I share with you the natural treatment protocols. Mosquitoes require water to live and they don't develop and go through their life cycles you know, in grass or shrubbery. However, the adults like to rest in these areas during the day. We mostly get bitten by the females. They feel attracted to humans, to birds or mammals. They only survive about three weeks during the summertime. They can also still live through the winter times and then they get ready to lay their eggs in the spring. The males are much kinder to us. You know, they're more interested in the plant juices. And the mosquitoes typically hang out in tall grasses and weeds near buildings and other structures because they love stagnant and standing water. We often find them in buckets or tires filled with water, maybe bird bath, you know, septic sewage, rain gutters, all of that. So it's a really good idea to clear out your garden, go around your garage and just remove this item. It really makes a difference. But did you know there are more than 3,000 types of mosquitoes in the world and nearly 200 of them live in the US. So that may explain that mosquitoes are actually a threat and have a reputation of delivering some pretty nasty results right from their bites. Now insect bites are punctured wounds that are caused by insects. And insects tend to bite either because they need to defend themselves, they get agitated, or they're seeking to feed. And the most common ones are the bees, the wasps, the mosquitoes, but also the flies, the fleas, and the ants or the bed bugs. Yeah, we don't want to talk about them, but they are a part of that. Most of the insect bites are mild and only lead to slight discomfort in the majority of the cases. But when an insect bites or stings, it injects venom in the body. And this results in a response from the body's immune system. And usually immediately we see the swelling, we see the irritation, followed maybe by the itchy, the itchiness, and then also the soreness. Now in a person having sensitivity to insect venom, that can be a life-threatening situation. We call it anaphylaxis. And of course, that requires immediate medical attention. Anaphylaxis refers to a severe allergic reaction that arises from a release of a certain chemicals by the body's immune system. So what are the symptoms you want to look out when you have an allergic reaction? So I would say hives, right, the welts, flushed or pale skin attended with swelling of the throat and the tongue, especially if you're sensitive to bees, trouble breathing, sudden drop in the blood pressure maybe, there can be nausea, vomiting, even diarrhea, lightheadedness, dizziness, maybe a rapid pulse and sometimes loss of consciousness. So please, that requires immediate medical attention. The most common symptoms are the redness, the swelling, the inflammation, there can be pain, cause intense itching, stinging sensation at the site where you got stung. Some maybe see some eruptions filled with fluid, they are blisters. 
and then the side of um, the sting can be quite hot to touch, particularly if it's a bee sting, you maybe can experience numbness and tingling sensation. But most of the time, all the symptoms disappear within a few days. As I said, the reaction that will occur varies upon which insect has actually stung you and also your individual sensitivity to uh, insect bites in general, your susceptibility we call it. Some infections occur in the insect bites in cases where you see foul pus even coming out that's, uh, in the area where it got um, affected. There may be a feeling of you know, being right, unwell, high fever, you know, maybe flu-like symptoms even or swelling of the glands involved. So please look out for, um, you know, of course, contact your healthcare practitioner for that. So what are the common insects? I would say mosquito. Um, they create these small round bumps um, and after a while they can get quite hard and red. It also gets swollen along with itching, but here the danger is of the transmission of diseases. We have dengue fever, we have malaria, we have Zika, we have yellow fever because they're carriers of infectious agent. We have the bed bugs, yes, uh, they can create quite a nasty rash um, attended with this itching, uh, which is really a reaction from an allergic um, sort of susceptibility. And the rash is small, it's red, it's swollen, and has often a dark red center in the middle. These appear in the uncovered parts of the bodies often occur in a line or in a cluster form. Um, quite itchy blisters maybe, they can be urticaria, there's welts or there's hives involved and anybody who was, was stung by fire ants knows exactly there is a real burning pain involved, a sensation of stinging and in some cases we have intense allergic reactions which can be quite dangerous, right? there can be maybe itching, swelling of the body as well as troubled breathing. And then we have the fly bites. Again, we can see here severe allergic reactions as well. Lots of itchy, lots of pain involved. Um, and then the flea bites, yes, they can usually appear in these hard papules within 12 to 24 hours after you got affected. Often they appear in clusters in the lower legs and the feet. Fleas can also um, cause transmission of diseases like typhoid, for example. And um, then we have the ticks, right? In tick bites, um, we have pain and swelling. The tick usually remains attached to the skin for a long time and the ticks may cause also skin rash, blisters, burning and problem breathing. Ticks may, of course, lead to Lyme disease. Um, it spreads from the tick bite because it's infected with the bacterium Borrelia, or known as Borrelia uh, burgdorferi. So, not a great idea to have them. Then we have the lice. They usually appear on the scalp or the pubic area. Of course, they feed on blood, and you need treatment right away. Then we have the horse flies. Where it really create a huge allergic reactions. Immediately when you're bitten, you have this sharp burning sensation. Uh, the skin is quite red, swollen. They can be mean bruising. Um, some cases experience hives. Definitely weakness, dizziness. Can be wheezing, itching of the eyes and the lips that can be red or can maybe be swollen. So it's quite a kaleidoscope of symptoms with the horse flies. Others maybe have experienced jiggers and they can be quite painful, can cause an itchy rash next to these wheels, this nettle rash, pimples, blisters, itching, and they often appear in the uh, folds of the skin in clusters like the elbows or back of the knees. And then of then, of course, we have the bees. They create redness, pain, swelling, itching at the side. And in some cases, there can be severe allergic reactions like the swelling of the throat or the tongue if you're really sensitive and allergic to bee sting. And here we see the anaphylaxis situation. Often with bee sting, 
this affected area is quite swollen and it looks like varnish the skin as if it's polished. Wasp is another one. They can sting multiple times actually. Here again we see redness, swelling and this raised welts. And then lastly, yellow jackets maybe. They cause a lot of swelling, redness, itching and tenderness in the area. So if you're interested in a health consultation, either for yourself or your children, contact me at Medicanova at health at medicanova.net. Medicanova is my practice for integrated and educational medicine. We offer a unique blend of natural and cutting edge therapeutic tools from homeopathy, aridology, sclerology, systemic herbology, advanced biofeedback, and health and wellness coaching and so much more. So book your appointment today. Let's move on to the natural treatments. In this video, I want to reframe from the food for thought and metaphysical meaning about the insect bites because it could be an assumption. You know, you can easily say if you are a victim uh, or feel like a victim every day in your life, then you may be more susceptible to be attacked by insects. That's one meaning, but it's an assumption and I don't want to go there in this video. So let's go straight into the natural treatments. I hope the lighting is okay today. Uh, we are about to have a really bad rainstorm in a minute, so I want to finish this video before it gets too dark here. The first agent I would say is witch hazel. It's a wonderful uh, help here. It helps with the pain, the annoying itching sensation, it cools the area and it also speeds up the healing of the skin tissue. It works because it contains an astringent called tannin and whenever you see tannin you, it means it contracts the skin, it pulls the skin together and therefore it reduces the swelling and really speeds up the healing process. You can get witch hazel gel in your health food store, sort of a transparent see-through liquid and you can also combine it a little bit with baking soda, make a paste and uh, add it to the affected area. It's a really effective treatment. Others like white tea or chamomile tea bags, maybe you have heard about, use used ones but they need to be cold so put them in the fridge maybe before and use them as a poultice. Very nice, it really reduces the inflammatory aspect and not only does it help with the inflammation but it cools down the area. So white tea and chamomile tea are known as great topical treatments for many skin issues uh, because the tea contains antiseptic antioxidant and polyphenolic uh, properties. It makes for the perfect and rather comforting fast remedy for mosquito bites. So you can't go wrong here. Others like neem oil. It's very strong and it can even kill mosquitoes, but it's also great for fungal infections in your body like eczema or anything that has to do with fungus. So if it can kill that, it definitely can heal your mosquito bites. If you want to have a nice healing bath, you maybe think about colloidal oatmeal bath. And uh, it's an old remedy, it holds a great reputation, it soothes the itchy skin, particularly mosquito bites. You know it's great for children, you know, if you keep itching and scratching all the time, put them in the evening in an oatmeal bath. So colloidal oatmeal is used as a moisturizer for itchy skin because it contains emollients. And what you can get, you get um, a coffee grinder, get yourself a bag of gluten-free oatmeal, uh, grind it in a fine powder, maybe you can put some few drops of chamomile essential oils to it and then soak in it for 15 minutes. It really helps to soothe the itching sensation. I looked around on the net for some homemade bug sprays and Dr. Axe has a great recipe here. He uses lemon essential oil, eucalyptus oil, peppermint oil, lang lang or lemongrass essential oil. Um, you can use your favorite you know, blend if you want uh, mixed with water or you can also uh, use your 
homemade box uh, sort of um, ointment, so to say, before you go outdoor and explore your outdoor activities. You can take a few drops of your favorite blend, um, mix it up with some carrier oil, some coconut oil or olive oil and spread it on your skin. It really helps as well. So if you want to explore more about yourself, your wellness vision, what motivates you and how to apply your strengths, qualities and achieving the very best of you, then contact Medicanova Wellness Coaching at health at medicanova.net for your three months coaching program. I'm coaching you to be well. So let's finish this video with my favorite subject called homeopathic remedies. They are so effective here and they cover you know, the whole list of different insect bites, uh, which is really easy in this case. So homeopathic remedies for insect bites can help in managing the bites where mild to moderate signs and symptoms are present especially in the localized area. They effectively reduce the sharp stinging pain, the pricking uh, sensation on the side, also soothes the itching of course, reduce the inflammatory part, bring down the redness and the swelling. And they're helpful also for managing the hives, right? The allergic reactions, which is really important here without any other symptom linked to anaphylaxis of course, but you know, if you find out and you know this is an anaphylaxis situation, you need medical treatment right away. What's the dosage plan? Well, for children, I would give one tablet of the potency 30, that's the number behind the name, maybe three to five times a day for two days only. If there's improvement already after the first day, then you don't have to give it for two days, right? As soon as improvement sets in, stop giving any more remedies. For adults, I would also choose the potency 30, but crank up the um, intake of tablets. Maybe you take it four to six times a day for um, two to three days and see how that goes. But all the suggested remedies you can uh, purchase in your local health food store or online. If you have any questions or you're not quite sure how to uh, take these homeopathic remedies, you need more guidelines, contact my practice Medicanova at health at medicanova.net or my website medicanova.net of course also consult your local healthcare practitioner. So I talked about one remedy which covers all these different kinds of insect bites and I would use Ledum palustre. Fantastic remedy here. Really the number one on your list um, is indicated for mosquito bites, for any bites, even snake bites. I don't want to mention that, but you know, would work here very well. So the wounded skin parts feel very cold to touch. You want to even have ice cold applications to bring down the swelling. There can be infections, so there, you maybe see even foul pus coming out of the infected area and therefore Ledum is really important because we want to stop any blood poisoning, want to stop any sepsis before you even reach your hospital. Um, so it's great for bee stings, for waspings, for mosquito bites. It also can be used as a preventative. Let's say you go camping and uh, you know you're very susceptible to uh, being bitten. I would use Lidum 30, you know, maybe three, four times a day as a preventative, even while you're out there. It maybe helps you not to get bitten so much. On the other hand, if you already have urticaria, like this allergic reaction with the hives, um, particularly when you are bitten by a bee, um, Apis mellifica is a wonderful remedy. It's actually made from the bee, the homeopathic remedies. Um, so you see these red wheels on the skin, lots of swelling, intolerable aging, particularly worse during the night. So um, with the bee stings I mentioned, you have this skin which is, looks a little bit polished or varnished. That's an indication that you were bitten by a bee in case you don't know, it, you know what has bitten you. So hives, urticaria, allergic reactions, think of apis, apis 30. And great remedy is called Hypericum 30. And here it's more when you see this marked soreness 
of the affected skin um, can be even related to nerve pains. Hypericum is a great remedy, especially for punctured wounds. Um, Arnica montana comes to mind when you see a lot of swelling. Um, and it's almost like the part of the skin it feels very hot to touch, hard, shiny, like apis. So if you give Arnica 30 and it doesn't really help, I would go straight into apis and follow it up with that. That usually helps. Now when you have the keynote is more related to itching or a burning right, sensation. Caladium sequinum will be very helpful here. There's intense itching present. I mean, to the point you wanted to scratch your skin off. Severe burning sensations. And um, I would say if you um, have given ledum and it doesn't help you, maybe want to follow it up with caladium. That's a good one here as well. And lastly, I would use Echinacea 30 also when you have a strong skin irritation in generally. There can be papules on the skin with redness. The skin may be very dry. Now, you can take Echinacea as a herbal tincture, like internally, you know, if you drop a fall during the day, or um, as a homeopathic remedy several times a day. It's really great remedy to boost your immune system and fight infections. So I hope that this video again packed with educational information and useful guidelines has given you an idea that there are natural solutions out there how to heal your insect bites. Now if you have any questions about the suggested treatment protocols or the homeopathic remedies contact me at my practice Medicanova at health at medicanova.net or my website medicanova.net. Now on my website you also find at the online academy certified university standard home study online courses either homeopathy for the whole family, homeopathy applied to pregnancy, birth or postnatal care, or if you ever wanted to learn about health and wellness coaching, integrated mental health, quantum healing and so much more, this is the place to come. Um, next to being a healthcare practitioner, I'm also a professor at the University of New Mexico for 18 years now and I teach online courses in integrated medicine. So. I know it well and I'm very happy to teach students all over the world. So make use of this because these courses are offered at a much cheaper price than maybe at institutions. So till next time, much love, take care and you know, make sure you're not getting bitten. <laughs>